And welcome to the Missouri Valley Conference men's basketball game of the week. The Valley on ESPN. From Banterra Center in Carbondale, Illinois, I'm R.C. McBride alongside Coach C. Rick Savosik. We talked about how strong Drake has been at home. These Salukis are no slouches. Six and one so far on the year, including their two Valley victories. Tempo, tempo, tempo. That's what this game is about this afternoon. Salukis want to slow it down. They're 25th in the country, only giving up 60 points a game. Meanwhile, Drake, they want to push the tempo. If the game is in the 80s, good for Drake, bad for Southern Illinois. Our spotlight players for this one, starting with the Bulldogs, two-time Missouri Valley Conference newcomer of the week, Roman Penn. He's the straw that stirs the drink, the facilitator. He's the general on the floor. 12 of their 18 games, he has had six or more assists. And then they're nine and three when he is delivering the dimes. 2.5 assist to turnover ratio, but he can also score, he keeps you honest. And then for Southern Illinois, it's the freshman Lance Jones, moves over to the point guard position with the injury to Aaron Cook, has picked up his game in conference play, increased his scoring average, and leads all freshmen in assists with three a game. And let's take a look at our starting lineups. A presentation of Casey's General Stores. Sign up for new Casey's Rewards, the rewards program that gives back by letting you redeem points for Casey's cash, fuel discounts, or donations to local schools. And starting out with the starting five for the Bulldogs, they have kind of settled into that rhythm. That is the five that we've come to expect. And we've already talked a lot about Penn. Liam Robbins, seven-footer in the middle. He'll make a lot happen. Perhaps one of the most improved players in the Missouri Valley Conference. And for the Southern Illinois Salukis, now this is a change. SIU has really been bitten by the injury bug. Harwin Francois in the starting lineup because Ronnie Suggs Jr. is out with an ankle injury. Francois did start four games earlier this year when Suggs was hurt earlier. Well, keep an eye on Lance Jones and his ability to control the tempo. That will be a key here this afternoon. And with that, we are just about set for tip-off. You get a good look there at the Bulldogs in the blue and Salukis in the home whites. There you are. You are right on top of the floor as we get this one underway. And couldn't think of a better place to be on a Sunday afternoon than watching some Valley basketball as the Salukis start out with the first possession. And there's Jones getting rid of it. Jones really quite a story. Never played point guard before anywhere at any level. Well, he's done a fine job in a fill-in role. And Drake is going to start man-to-man, -man, but a lot of zone principles. They'll switch on every screen. Very bent. Edson couldn't get it to fall, and Salukis won it out in their first position. Inside to the big man. They made it look easy, didn't they? He just has gotten so much better game after game, way ahead of the schedule. Liam Robbins, and he really knows exactly where he is on the floor at any given moment, doesn't he? Credit Darren DeVries and his staff. They'd instill the... A lot of confidence in this young man, and he is produced. Under 10 to shoot now. On top, it's McGill with time winding down off the screen, and he nails it. That's the perfect possession for Southern Illinois. Run the shot clock down, make the three. Well, you talked about tempo. That is something we will keep an eye on. Certainly a storyline for this one is the Salukis take their first lead look to get it inside there's Jackson he likes to shoot the three a lot back down low and time running out as we're under 10 for the Bulldogs Penn finds nothing Robbins will shoot it a little off the mark and the rebound to Damask somebody else's name that we're going to be calling a lot here this afternoon he has been exciting as a freshman we talk so much about SIU's defense and their ability to control the tempo, but the tempo is really controlled on the offensive end. Up top, Benson lines it up straight on. A little bit short that time. Rebound comes to DJ Wilkins. The evolution of the game, RC, 
Two seven-footers taking three-point shots. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago where that would have been unheard of. And Robbins with all four points. I like Robbins in the post a little bit better. Nice touch inside. Feels like more of a sure thing, a little higher percentage. Yeah, absolutely. Mask charges in. Out top, a little shorter distance this time for Benson. The back and forth we go. Salukis back on top. Anthony Murphy, senior, all Valley bench team last year. First turnover of the ball game. And now the Salukis with a chance to extend the lead. McGill makes his own shot in and out. The rebound by Wilkins. Wilkins thought about it. Inside instead. Can't get a friendly bounce. And big fight for the rebound. And great job by Benson just keeping control, keeping the handle on the ball. Now Jones will slow it down a little bit. Hill. Kick out, three ball, short. Rebound, and a steal back, and a put up. Lance Jones. Smart play by Jones. Always follow your shot. Now the three for the tie is good. So Murphy comes right back. Anthony Murphy, 6 5, senior. from the left side is too strong and there to get it Liam Robbins Head. turns tries to use the glass nothing and tell you what the Saluki's doing a nice job on the boards here early on defensive conversion very good everybody back tough shot look at that battle in the middle the shot is good you see Benson with a low-key fist pump after getting that one to fall against Robbins. Benson has been a terrific addition to this roster. The transfer, the grad transfer from Northwestern gives them a totally different dimension. Jones, great anticipation on the long carom. McGill. Nice move by Jones. Cross court, here's Francois. This is everything. Didn't catch it clean, RC. Needed one more pass. Murphy, cross court. And on the sideline. And that'll turn us over as we head to our first timeout. Salukis, again, strong on their home floor. They're out to an early two point lead. The Valley on ESPN is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 1-800-STATE-FARM or by visiting statefarm.com. Let's get a quick look while we can at Coach Z's coaches or keys to the game, a production of the Holiday Inn Conference Center, the preferred hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference in Carbondale. Well, we've seen a little bit of that right now. Patiently aggressive for Drake, even though Southern Illinois wants to control the tempo, you don't want to take a quick shot because you're going to come back and play 30 seconds of defense and then win. What's important now? Don't play from backwards, play forward. What's important now? Your next job. And then Southern Illinois, we talked about it at the outset, dictate the pace. And the pace starts on the offensive end. You take a bad shot, it leads to a run out. You take a good shot, you got a chance for an offensive rebound, and you also have floor balance and the ability to get back on the defensive end and may, make Drake play you in the half court. Talking about the Southern Illinois defense, they are first in the Valley at defensive points per game, and in fact rank 21st in the nation in that category. So. Coach Mullins in his first year has these guys working it on defense and on offense too as the lead is now four. Terrific set play right out of the timeout. Easy dump, dump off to uh, Benson. Benson with six points in the early going. 
and another turnover. So Drake already with three turnovers, none for the Salukis. Got to move without the ball. Knocked away, and that's the first SIU turnover. I guess I jinxed them. And some new faces into the ball game for the Bulldogs. Noah Thomas. Filipovich into the game. And nearly another turnover for SIU. They get it right back, though. Also into the game for the first time is Garrett Sturz. Shot clock did reset. So the officials are saying that it changed possessions. Not sure I'm going to agree with that one. Nevertheless, they missed the shot. It all worked out anyway. What's the line? Ball don't lie. Southern Illinois trying to build now on a four-point lead. Here, Davis into the game for the first time. Down low, here's Benson again. He will fight his way up, gets his own miss. Putback won't go, but he'll head to the free throw line. Love the stick to it, Timothy Barrett Benson. They know they have a size mismatch. And Benson just not able to gather himself, but he aptly goes after the offensive rebound. Chance for a couple of free throws. Filipovich picks up his first foul, as you saw clearly on the behind the basket shot. Take a good look at Barrett Benson. And as we mentioned, he adds so much more to this team. He gives them experience, a high basketball IQ, graduated from Northwestern in three years. <laughs> Most people can't graduate from Northwestern. He does it in three years. Most people don't get in. You right? know, he's, he comes from great bloodlines. And, you know, his father was a terrific player and at Purdue, and his mother, an airline pilot. And he is just, as Coach Brian Mullins calls him, just a great teammate. Yeah, two time all academic Big Ten team member. Foul coming up on Anthony Murphy. That'll be his first. Just the second team foul for the Bulldogs. And one more point on Benson. If you're wondering how a Northwestern transfer gets to Southern Illinois, there's a little family connection as Benson played AAU basketball for Brian Mullen's father. Um, so they had a relationship going. Brian gets the job. And Benson says, I'll come play for you. Three from the left side. That's good. Eric McGill, two for him. The lead now extended. Southern Illinois, six of 13. Drake just three of eight. Drake has not made a field goal in almost four minutes. And they'll... Foul coming up. I'm going to say, that's a nice way to stop a string like that and get it into your seven-footer. Robbins does a terrific job of keeping the ball in the air. Doesn't bring it down to the Rugrats. Body contact. And that's the improvement in Robbins' game, the ability to catch in traffic. Brendan Gooch whistled with the foul. There you get a look at... Darren DeVries, second year head coach. Now six points for Robbins. Five of the 10, I know a lot's been made of that, but it's still pretty cool. Five of the 10 Valley head coaches on the men's side played in this league, and we're seeing two of them here this afternoon. Darren DeVries, a good player at Northern Iowa. Obviously, people here know that Brian Mullins was a two-time defensive player of the year here for the Salukis and his team plays with that same type of grit. But that almost went in. <laughs> Looked good when he let go of it. It's tough enough just getting the shot off. Inside, now back out. Sturts now back in against the triple team. Can't get it to go. And fighting for the board is Davis and a foul coming up on Robbins. Frustration by Robbins after the miss. And the Salukis continue to build on this lead. Timeout on the floor. Our 
Missouri Valley Conference standings are a presentation of Purina Dog Chow, crafted in the USA by people who care with high quality ingredients. That's the Dog Chow promise. Northern Iowa goes on the road yesterday, beats Bradley by double digits. And think about this now, they have swept Bradley, they have beaten Loyola, and have won at Missouri State, the preseason number one team. So Northern Iowa off to a great start. Already starting to build that case. Tell you what, building a, a case for winning this game is Barrett Benson. And the mid-range game, and terrific move. Use of the left hand over the outstretched arm of Robbins. Good catch in traffic. I don't know that people realize how tough that is. The ball is be beneath you, and you're trying to catch it in traffic for a 6'11 guy. Good catch and finish. Six-point lead. for Southern Illinois to mask back into the ball game. An exciting freshman, but we've not had a chance to call his number much. And Benson with the travel. Saluki's with two turnovers now. Back the other way we go. Here's Penn fighting his way through, out of bounds. It'll be Saluki ball. And that is one of those plays that Drake has to be careful of when you're down six you don't get want to get a little anxious because you know at this end you're going to have to come down and play some defense for 30 seconds how much of that though coach is controlling the pace i mean you said it yourself or trying to control the pace or maybe change the pace at this point if you're drake well they haven't been able to get out and run because southern illinois has been making shots the mask loses the handle quick recovery not a lot of time left though Lance Jones will make a run at it. And a whistle before the shot. Out on 14, Noah Thomas, Thomas with his first personal foul. Noah Thomas picking up the foul. It's his first. Let's have a look. Lance Jones knows how much time is left on the shot clock, like all good point guards do. And once he puts his head down and his shoulders get by the defender, there's no other choice but to foul. I spoke too soon, obviously. Foul on the shot. Jones a 70% free throw shooter coming into the ball game. I don't know if Southern Illinois fans would like this comparison, but I mean this in sincere flattery. Lance Jones reminds me of Cujo Halegba, who played at Northern Iowa, was an all-conference player at the point guard position. Long, tough defender. I know Lance Jones is not a normal point guard or didn't come in playing the point, but he's developed this year into a pretty good point guard. Well, and he's becoming a bit of a fan favorite, and I think part of that was, you know, having to assume the role and the job he's doing in it. He's a perfect example, doing an outstanding job of keeping Roman Penn in front of him. High bounce, and there's Jones positioned himself well for that board. He'll take it himself and gets a good roll. Jones with five. So Lukey's now on an 11-2 run in the last six minutes. And it has been a long time since we have called a Drake field goal. Good rotation by Southern Illinois. Three ball no by Jonah Jackson. He loves to shoot from the corner. Couldn't get it to go that time. And a chance for Southern Illinois to further extend this lead. Southern Illinois is at the point now where they're facing the test of how do you handle success? You're up eight. Do you continue to run your offense, get the kind of shot that you want? Perfect example of staying within your game. And a timeout called by the Bulldogs, Marcus Damask. That's what we have come to expect from him, a pretty, pretty shot. And Coach DeVries seeing enough with his team down 11. Let's have another look. A good job of spacing the floor, the mask just far enough off the lane that there is nobody that could come over and double team him. And with the size advantage, he's a scorer. And we are almost at seven minutes without a Drake field goal. 
16-10 was the last one. You think Brian Mullins is in their huddle right now saying, hey, we're doing a great job on the defensive end, but we cannot let up. This is a, a team that is playing shorthanded. They've gotten a, a good start out of Eric McGill with a couple of threes, but they have to continue to grind it out on the defensive end. Well, and look at the number of the difference in number of shots taken. Southern Illinois, eight of 17. Drake, three out of just 12 attempts. Down low, the defense right there, but a foul on Francois. Just a hair late getting there. Yeah, rotation with you're trying to help out with somebody who is six inches bigger. You got to be early. You can't be late. Robbins back at the free throw line. He has six of the nine points. Rick Majerus had a great quote with his team and a, and a mantra that he always preached. Defensively, be early. Offensively, it's okay to be late. Offensive rebound, and we'll head right back to the free throw line. This time it'll be Anthony Murphy. Yeah, that's a no-no. Offensive rebound on a missed free throw. Brian Mullins has no gray hair right now, but they keep giving up offensive rebounds on free throws. He'll have plenty of gray hair before it's all said and done. Drake unable to take advantage, though. How much going right early for Drake? Well, this has been a team this year that is started slow in a number of games still very early obviously but the Salukis have doubled them up you can see the full court pressure they're trying to get southern illinois out of their offensive rhythm dipped away but recovered the mask loses the handle they stick with it though and again a not a lot of time used by the Salukis. Out top, McGill, he'll duck the defender, the three, shy, out of bounds to Drake. If I'd have told you that this would be the score at this point of the ball game and the mask would only have the one bucket, would you have believed me? I don't know that I would have believed you on the 20 points for Southern Illinois. I would have believed you that they've held Drake to 10. But that's what happens when seniors make plays, you win games. And there's a senior stepping in, making a steal. The bass, the three, got it. The steal and the assist by McGill. 13 points, a Lukey Lee. Reverse psychology. Offensive foul. This crowd here, Van Tenister, Van Terrace Center is into it. And a timeout on the floor. And the fans are on their feet. Well, some of them are on their feet. Saluki's lead by 13. And as we head into the break, Let's take another Develop look at that, that charge. And I don't know if you can catch it, but the fan reaction. Uh, we don't really hear it, but take my word for it. <laughs> it was there. It, they applauded that charge louder than I have seen fans applaud a three, a dunk. And that is the change of culture here under Brian Mullins. They appreciate good, solid defense. Hustle plays like Barrett Benson just made on the charge. And Liam Robbins picking up his second foul. Coach C, so he is on the bench. So a big weapon for Drake out of the game, at least for now, with the Salukis already staked to a 13-point advantage. Well, just like clockwork, isn't it? They run 20 seconds off and to the hoop. Lance Jones. That is the... Seventh possession where they have scored with under 10 seconds on the shot clock. 
DJ Wilkins snaps a long string for Drake. They had not made a field goal since the 16-10 mark, so almost nine full minutes. You have a size advantage with Damask being guarded by Penn. Let's see if they send Damask into the post. Right side three, a little short, rebound, tapped away. Hey, that was good hustle by Drake. Wilkins with a nice read. He hustles back down through the lane. Finger roll goes. And the foul. DJ Wilkins making plays at both ends. Challenged the shot. Came in, knocked it loose. And then in transition. You see the replay on the foul. Wilkins with four points, but great note, Coach. I mean, again, he made that rebound. He knocked it loose to a teammate. And he terrific body control as he slides by the defender. And he completes the three-point play. And again, Drake picking up full court. They do not want to get into a half-court game with Southern Illinois and allow them to methodically just kind of pick you apart. Trent Brown. First recruit to commit to Coach Mullins in his tenure here. And again, under 10 to shoot. Knocked away. It's guess who again? They grab it back, and the prayer for three won't go. And the rebound by Drake. Murphy, the one to pull it down. Here's Penn. Back to Murphy. And cannot get a friendly rim. Benson with the rebound. Damask, well, that was about as fast as we have seen the Salukis take the ball down the floor. <laughs> Brian Mullins telling, pull it out, pull it out, run your offense. Damask out top, wide left. Track down in the corner. Go to Jackson with the rebound. That one had a little more steam on it off the rim than he thought. He almost carried it out of bounds. Wilkins. Ball movement here all the way around the perimeter. Ben with the reset. Kick out. Three. Got it. Anthony Murphy. And that is going to lead to an SIU timeout. Drake is on an eight-nothing run just in the last two minutes since the last media timeout. A well, much different look without Robbins in the game. It's basically playing five out, space the floor, create some driving lanes, and on that last possession, they drive the help side defense comes over, kick it to the three. A much more free-flowing offense playing five out, and it also gives Drake a chance to pick up full court, pressure the ball a little bit more. If you're Southern Illinois, you've got to make sure that, you know, on the overplay, go back door and terrific job by Wilkins of driving to the rim. Don't settle for jump shots when you're down. Get the defense back on their heels, which they did on those two previous possessions. Then you kick out for the wide open three. So Drake with the run. Now it's up to the Salukis to respond. Drake, two for six for three. Southern Illinois, three of 13. They were five of 26 in their loss against Loyola on Thursday night. Game that saw Southern Illinois score only 48 points. A couple things you need to do against pressure. Put the ball on the floor, drive it to the rim, throw it to the rim, or go back door. Good execution, nice high-low from Damask for Benson. Second foul for Pilipovich, and Benson will go to the line. Seven points in the book already. RC, you see how he pushed Pilipovich up the lane. Once they, he does that, it creates space to make that pass so you're not too far under where you can't finish him on the shot. Free throw snaps the Drake run. 
gets them both. So nine points for Benson. Bulldogs up the floor in a hurry. Wilkins, nice pass down low. Couldn't complete the shot, but a well-earned trip to the free throw line. McGill picks up his first foul. He slips the screen and the mask. And Jones, two freshmen trying to switch on the slip. And Murphy made a good read. Murphy leading the team in this one now with eight points. See Brady Ernst into the game for the first time. The Richard senior from Clinton, Iowa, coming in at 6'10". He's had a well-traveled route to get to the Drake program. That'll give Drake a little more size with Robbins on the bench with two fouls. of Salukis fighting for the rebound. Which you're okay with as long as it doesn't get out of hand, right? As long as there's communication. Make sure you don't travel. Fighting his way in, nothing there for Jones. Now back down low, pretty pass, and the finish by Carrington Davis. Once again, under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Ben had to hustle to get that loose ball. Great reaction by the Richard sophomore from Calumet City, Illinois. Wilkins to three, too strong. Murphy tracking the board. Penn gets it to go. You know, Murphy understands long shots create long rebounds. You can't just walk underneath the basket, get an extra shot because of it. Penn with just two points and a whistle and an offensive foul looks like on Jones so Drake trying to push back but the Salukis still in control of this one stay tuned for our halftime reporter presentation of State Farm talk to an agent today at 1-800-STATE-FARM or by visiting State Farm Dot com. And a whole lot coming up, including that profile of Coach Brian Mullins. We have a good one. Here, Coach, is the Salukis making another stand on their home floor. Doing an excellent job on the defensive end for seven turnovers already. Offensively, they are playing very efficient basketball. Drake trailing by eight, but one number does stand out at you that has been pretty impressive and I think could bode well if it continues, but they do have seven assists on seven makes. Can't get a better ratio than that. And while Roman Penn only has the one field goal, he does have five of the seven assists. Now that bodes well for Drake if he can get one more, which I think he's probably got a pretty good chance of doing. Penn out top, out top now for three. Murphy a little off the mark and the rebound comes to Lance Jones. This game just really flows into kind of a steady pace with the way the Salukis run every offensive possession. Pretty move, but it won't go as we see Liam Robbins back into the game. He took an early seat with a couple of fouls. Noah well, Thomas hands it off to Penn. RC, keep an eye on Roman Penn. He, looks like he jammed his shoulder on a screen. Fires the three, it's too strong, and another board for Jones. The mask. A whistle. And a foul on Drake. 
Noah Thomas picks up his second foul, and that is number seven for the Bulldogs. This will send Trent Brown to the line. Eight for nine on the season from the free throw line. Go, but boy, they're scrapping for every board, aren't they? And the mask understood that he couldn't get it, so he tried to tip it back to himself. Keeps it alive. That earned some respectful applause. And in and out, and the rebound grabbed by Robbins. Makes a difference when he's in there. Hand a little short this time. Robbins had one hand held, got the rebound with the other hand, and earned his way to the free throw line. The difference he makes in the game, watch Benson. He doesn't want to leave him because he knows if he takes one step up, it's a lob to Robbins and an easy two. So that indecision, the inability to come with the ball, forces a free throw attempt on the foul. Benson's first foul. Seven points now for Robbins. So he hits them both. And he'll take a quick seat. Nerds will come back in. He's played a couple of minutes. The gamble paid off for Darren DeVries. A little offense, defense with Robbins with two fouls. Don't need him to pick up his third. Good job of managing his team's foul trouble. Barrett Benson takes a seat for Southern Illinois. So down to 100 seconds to go for the first half. And taking it all the way in is Eric McGill. Well, he's had a game, hasn't he? Now Eight Roman, points. Roman Penn's got to not fight that. He's just got to fall down when the offensive player puts his shoulder down. Ernst taps it out, but Jones has been all over the place picking up those boards. Now he'll take it in. The floater won't go. Ernst with the board. He'll spit it out to D.J. Wilkins. Wilkins, a preseason all-MVC selection. Made the all-Valley freshman team last year. And he's got it with 11 to shoot for the Bulldogs. Down to 47 for the half. Penn, got to hurry it up. Almost a miscommunication. Shot got off just in time, but was well shy. And Francois with the rebound. Drake now just two for 11 beyond the arc. SIU three of 13, so not exactly a clinic here in the early going from the long distance shooting. Southern Illinois using a lot of time. McGill gets it back down to three to shoot. Now DeMass, and he barely gets it off for the rebound. Grabbed by Drake with two seconds to go. Launch from half court to Strong. And so ends the first half. And the Saluki fans giving their team some applause with an eight-point lead as we head to the half. Time now to check in with Southern Illinois head coach Brian Mullins for today's Casey's General Store plans for the second half. Here's Coach C. Coach, the tempo favored the Salukis. What was the key to controlling the tempo in the first half? Our, our transition defense. We did a good job getting back in transition, and it's got to be the same way the second half. It seemed like there was a point of emphasis to try and get the ball inside with Benson. What's going to be the, mention, or the message to the team in the second half? We got to get paint touches still on offense, you know, whether it's driving it or getting it down low on the post-ups, and then we got to continue to guard. You know, we, we're going to win with our defense, and we got to have it in our second half. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Our chat with the coaches brought to you by Casey's General Store. Casey's here for good. Stick around. Our State Farm Halftime Report coming up. Salukis by eight.
And welcome into our halftime reporter presentation of State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 1 800 State Farm or by visiting statefarm.com. Time now for today's profile made possible by Arch Madness 2020. NBC correspondent Brad Gray takes a look at Saluki's head coach and Valley legend Brian Mullins. For first year head coach Brian Mullins, Southern Illinois University is a place that he holds near and dear to his heart. Just, um, you know, it feels great to be honest. It feels great to see all the people that, you know, were here for me when I was a player and now they're here to greet me as a head coach. And I, you know, that's why SAU is so special. The, the people here are, are what makes it great. As a player, Mullins led his team to two NCAA appearances. His four years here in Carbondale helped him realize just what made SIU so special. You know, like I said before, I think it's it's the people and, and the relationships and the memories I have from here. Not even so much the, the wins and losses, but, you know, the times I've spent with so many people that are still here and, and the people that have watched me and followed me throughout my professional career in France and over at Loyola and that are excited for me right now. Um, you know, it's it's always been special to me and, you know, it's just an amazing opportunity, you know, to be able to come back and lead this program. The Saluki Hall of Famer has already made a large impact on this year's team. Coach is, is really young, um, the whole coaching staff is young, but they have experience at the same time. Uh, you know, the coach going to the Final Four at Loyola uh, just gave me uh, the confidence that even though he's young and he's been on the winning programs before he knows how to win. Yeah, coach Mullins, he, um, he tells us all the time how hard it is just to, to win in the Valley. Um, and just telling us what it takes. He, um, he always emphasizes how details are very important and um, how just playing together for 40 minutes is just very important. So yeah, um, his experience is extremely important. I feel uh, excited. I feel, um, um, I feel like the hard work, you know, has paid off and that, you know, I can't wait, you know, to hear Brian Mullins, a successful head coach. For the Valley on ESPN, I'm Brett Gray. Back at the half, the Valley on ESPN, Southern Illinois with an eight-point lead. Welcome back in. I'm R.C. McBride alongside Rich Vosick. And Coach, if I remember right, again, that was an hour ago, so it was a long <laughs> time ago, but your key numbers for point totals were 80 and 60. So far, this one is trending SIU's direction. Well, the magic number, tempo, 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 and the magic number is 60. That's what Southern Illinois needs to keep it. Now, they've done an excellent job of dictating tempo, maintaining the pace, because they've been able to score the basketball. They've also forced seven Drake turnovers, and some of that comes from Drake gets a little anxious because they have to play 30 seconds worth of defense, and now they're only getting to play about five or 10 seconds worth of offense. So it's, it's gonna be up to SIU to be able to dictate tempo here in the second half, or for the Bulldogs to try and speed things up. Well, let's take a look at our first half highlights in this one. A presentation of Live by Low St. Louis. Roman Penn mid-range jumper and then he drives the defense back and gets the kick and Wilkins who had an outstanding first half gets right to the rim but I don't know if anybody's had a better first half than Eric McGill. A couple of threes then a drive and then a nice dump off from Benson to Davis. And Lance Jones doing an outstanding job in the first half of controlling the action, running the show. Want to experience the newest hotel in downtown St. Louis, located next to Ballpark Village? Visit livebylows.com to book your hotel room today. We are at the half. Salukis, bye. More to come. Welcome back in to Banterra Center on the campus of Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, Illinois. And it's time now to get Drake head coach Darren DeVries plans for the second half of presentation of Casey's General Stories, Coach Z. Coach, the pace was to the Saluki's liking. It never seemed like you guys could get some offensive rhythm going. What was the, the key that, that you weren't able to get rhythm? Yeah, I thought we were just a little out of sorts. It started with we weren't getting stops early, you know, and. Um, it's hard to get out and run when they're, you know, taking the ball out of the net. But just in general, our offense and things was, uh, you know, we were turning it over too much. I, I didn't like some of our shot selection and things. 
Uh, we just got to play cleaner. Right now, I, I thought, um, you know, I thought uh, Southern just played harder than us, you know, and that got rewarded for it with the bulk of the, you know, loose balls and some rebounds and things. So uh, it, we just got to start with, you know, playing with a little more uh, tenacity and, and then, uh, uh, you know, play with a little more confidence and swagger at both ends of the floor. What was the message or what type of changes will we see in the second half to try and speed the game up? Well, we're just trying to get more aggressive defensively, you know, into the ball, into some passing lanes, uh, try to disrupt them as best we can and make them uncomfortable. Uh, you know, really the same thing they did to us in the first half. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Coach Z's chat with the coaches brought to you by Casey's General Store. Casey's here for good. And let's take a look at our first half stats, a production of Purina Dog Chow, crafted in the USA by people who care with high-quality ingredients. That's the Dog Chow promise. And... There you get a look. Turnovers, a big part of this one. The Salukis also the big advantage points in the paint. And again, just the number of shots not only made, but the number of attempts taken was pretty much all Salukis at this point. That's why SIU stinks to an eight point halftime lead. Second half is straight ahead. Welcome back. We are set for half number two. Drake trailing by eight, sends the ball in, and we are underway. Quick scan of who's on the floor. Drake with its original starting five in there. SIU with a little different look is Trent Brown out there to start the second half in place of Arwin Francois. Three ball for Penn, and that is the kind of start that the Bulldogs wanted. Good look by Liam Robbins out of the post. Penn with five points. He's averaging 12 and a half a game. Second on the team in that stat behind Robbins. And Robbins gets the rebound. Here's Penn, found himself open, and so much so that he walked. At least that's what it looked like it happened. He just, he was surprised. Oh, there's nobody in front of me. The Valley on ESPN is brought to you by Casey's General Store. Sign up for new Casey's Rewards, the rewards program that gives back by letting you redeem points for Casey's cash, fuel discounts, or donations to local schools. Turnovers certainly... A problem for the Bulldogs in the first half. Damask against the triple team and a held ball. And well, you hear the reaction. When Brian Mullins thinks there's contact underneath. Let's take another look. I gotta tell you that that was pretty clean up top. May have gotten them at the very end, but I have seen a lot worse not called. Ball comes in to Brown, and he'll get it back out top to McGill, and then the Jones. Six to shoot. Here comes Jones, finds the lane, won't go. Robbins with the board. Outlets to Wilkins. Now to Penn. Here it Sturtz. Back into the game. Robbins spins right in and out. That has been a stiff rim they both have for the Bulldogs so far. Sturts, the former walk on, battling underneath, knocks it off a Saluki player. And he's really settled into a nice role for the Bulldogs. Eight points, five boards in the win against Illinois State on Thursday night. And the bounce pass for the slam. Perfectly executed. SIU got caught in the squat. They came halfway on a double team. And because of that, a clear shot to make the pass to Robbins. And that leads to a Southern Illinois timeout. A 5 nothing run with authority for Drake to start the second half.
anniversary of Arch Madness tips off March 5th through 8th, and the only place to celebrate before and after all the action at Enterprise Center is the MVC Fan Hangout at Ballpark Village. The MVC Fan Hangout is the ideal place showcasing a diverse offering of restaurants, entertainment, nightlife attractions, and everything Arch Madness. For additional information, download the Arch Madness app today. Early on in the second half, and so far in this half, it's been all Bulldogs. Drake trying to make a comeback, but watch this last play by Benson. He comes halfway and doesn't come hard to double team, and because of that, Sturts has a clear line of vision to make the next pass to Robbins for the dunk. If you're gonna double team the post, you gotta come and be aggressive and block that vision so the next pass can't be made. First year head coach Brian Mullins, the Saluki Hall of Famer, wasting no time before using the timeout. Maybe try to get some of that intensity back. We saw it throughout the first half. Damask draws the entire defense and also draws the foul. It's going to be Robbins third. Robbins had to sit some time. Boy, you're going to get a foul earned it, I guess, right? But he sat quite a bit in the first half after picking up a second foul, so he finds himself in some trouble already here in half number two. And you saw Brian Mullen's reaction. He didn't think the foul was called quick enough. The official was like, hey, wait a second. I got to get the whistle into my mouth and made the proper call, but a good set play out of the timeout to get your leading score of the ball and a chance for two free throws. The mask now with six points after the free throws. That stops the Drake run to start the half. Roman Penn take it inside the dump to Robbins and he misses. Robbins out there with three fouls. Couldn't get it to go, and the rebound to the Salukis. He's got to be careful inside with Benson, and if you're SIU, go right at him. We talked earlier, Rich, about there's a lane violation on the Bulldogs, but what Barrett Benson brings to this team is a graduate transfer. And I think that has clearly made an impact here this afternoon so far. He brings the intangibles. Obviously, he's a good player, or he wouldn't have played in the Big Ten, but the intangibles, the experience, the ability to help the younger guys grow, he's done an outstanding job with that. Penn to Robbins, and a nice spin move against Benson. He gets it to go this time. Second half from the floor, Drake three for five. Salukis, the dog still looking for their first make. They're 0 for 2. Darren DeVries rolling the dice with Robbins with three fouls here early in the second half. Benson against Robbins, and Robbins with the block, and it goes out of bounds. Let's have another look. Benson. Very smartly goes right at him. And <laughs> quickly, the assistant for Drake got up and whispered something in Darren DeVries' ears about get Robbins out of there. He's got three. He's got three. Drake with a steal off the inbound. Out top, long three is short, and there's Benson to grab the board. Salukis haven't made a field goal since the 135 mark of the first half. And both teams struggling from the three-point line. Drake makes almost eight a game. Foul Only. coming up. Sturts picks up his first foul, and that'll take us to another timeout. But Drake still with the momentum. The Saluki lead is down to three. March Madness. There's nothing like it. 
And the road to the final four goes through St. Louis. The 2020 NCAA men's basketball first and second rounds March 19th and 21st at Enterprise Center hosted by the Missouri Valley Conference. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets and get your seats today. R.C. McBride, Rich Savosic, and Coach Z, that, that's not all that far off. It'll be here before you know it. Team's jockeying for position right now. Nobody wants to play that first night, that Thursday night game. And this game here will go a long way to determining the brackets for Arch Madness. Drake with a 7-2 run to start the half, Coach. Just terrific passing, unselfishness, making the extra pass. And Robbins, the recipient on a couple of those. And your point certainly holds when you look. You've got a team in Drake at three and two in the Valley. Southern Illinois, two and three in the Valley. And Brian Mullins knows how important it is to get out of that Thursday game. Mask now with nine points. Leading the team with 14.3 a game, and really, he, along with Lance Jones, two of the most exciting freshmen in the Missouri Valley Conference. When you think about what the one, two, and three would have been for Southern Illinois. Is Jones comes over and takes the charge, but with a healthy Aaron Cook, you're talking about Cook, Jones, and Damas. That's a pretty good one, two, three in this league. Anthony Murphy with the offensive foul picks up his second. Yeah, looking at the Valley rankings, Damas among Valley freshman leads in points, second in rebound. Or first in rebound, second in assists, pardon me, among Valley freshmen, fifth in steals. Jones, ninth in points, seventh in boards, second in assists, fifth in steals. Ryan Mullins told us, you know, DeMass doesn't take bad shots. He almost wishes he would take a couple. Lance Jones with a pretty shot. And the dogs back on top by seven. Well, you can really start to feel some of the enthusiasm building back here for Saluki basketball. You can feel it being on campus today. Well, you look at the, the crowd on a Sunday afternoon and the place is packed and it starts at home. You, you're trying to rekindle the tradition, build a culture. It starts with protecting home court advantage and they have done an outstanding job of that this year already. Down low and a block by Filipovich from behind, second attempt won't go. So some good defense by the Bulldogs who are certainly not going to go quietly. Just haven't seen a sustained run from them other than the 7-2 run to start the half. And nice floater by Noah Thomas. Draws them back to within five. Top. Shot won't go, but a foul coming up on Roman Penn. Foul down 12, Roman Penn, Penn with his first personal foul. It's one foul for Penn. Foul Again, good patience in the half court. Penn McGill. may have caught his guide arm as he went up. McGill going to get a couple of free throws to Southeast Missouri transfer. McGill now with nine points, counting that one. Aside from 48 seconds early on, SIU has led this entire game. Seven point advantage once again. Sturts tried to take it in. Now pin the three. No. And the rebound by McGill. Really tracked it nicely, didn't he? He certainly did. And good look. Long bomb out top. And that gets the Saluki lead back to double digits. And that's one of those shots as a coach, Brian Mullins, is, oh, no, 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 good shot, Eric. 
A little quick on the trigger, but McGill has been hot from behind the three-point line. Filipovich in and out. And McGill with the rebound. Leads all scorers right now with 13 points. Four boards and three assists. And he'll fire it up again. Got it. Timeout. Drake. And those are some pumped up Salukis. RC, it's an oft often used cliche when seniors make plays to win games. And Eric McGill having a day. An 8 nothing run for Southern Illinois over the last 1 minute and 18 seconds. And McGill putting the team on his back right now. Brian Mullins talked with us earlier about, you know, he's got to find somebody to pick up the slack with Suggs being out and obviously with Cook being out again. And McGill has answered the call. Yeah, not a when you look up and down this team, not a whole lot of experience, at least not experience in this program. Ten new faces for the Salukis. Let's have one more look at that last sequence. Well, that's set up by dribble penetration by Jones. He pulled the defense with him. McGill just enough room to get that off. Just as it looked like maybe Drake was getting the momentum back, the Salukis come back charging in a hurry. 8 nothing run in less than a minute and a half. Coach DeVries gets Robbins back in the game with three fouls, perhaps a little earlier than he wanted, but can't afford to get this deficit any bigger. Jones just takes it in, and the foul. And that looks like number four. Or they call it on Jackson. Well, they should have called it on Jackson because he was the one who made the contact first, and I think they did get it right. Yep, they got it right. Well, you got to, if you're a Drake fan watching this one, you're probably well, you're just breathing a bit of it, but just a bit of a sigh of relief to not see number four on Robbins, who came in flying late. Bulldogs trying to find an answer. Kept out of bounds. But not much going right for Drake. Jonah Jackson, I mean, that's, he's one of your star shooters over the last five games. 20 of 48 from the three-point line coming in. Ian Wilkins were high school teammates. And Drake has struggled offensively, but credits SIU's defense, they've done an outstanding job of keeping the ball in front, limiting dribble penetration. Tapped away, and that almost left the mask wide open and uncovered. Heads up play by Jackson. To the hoop. And Benson puts it home. 14 Southern Illinois points off of 11 Drake turnovers. Three ball, in and out. Well, the proverbial lid seems on, doesn't it? Here come the Salukis again. And they are fired up. In the blink of an eye, a 19-point SIU lead. I'm not sure Darren DeVries has enough timeouts left. A nice little drop-off by DeMask and Benson. Join us Wednesday for more men's basketball action on the Valley on ESPN as the Bradley Braves host the Illinois State Redbirds at Carver Arena in Peoria in the first of a pair of 2020 games in the I-74 rivalry. Exclusive coverage begins at 7 o'clock Central on the Valley on ESPN. The Salukis with a lot to cheer about right now and Ventura Center pretty lively to say the least a 14 nothing run for SIU over the last 244 Eric McGill the spearhead on that big run a couple of back-to-back -back threes 
And Lance Jones getting all the way to the rim with a traditional three-point play. And nice interior passing by Damask. R.C. McBride alongside Rich Zavosik. And I'll tell you what, Drake started out the half with a 5-0 run. So they're already, you know, they're trailing. A lot of young teams, a lot of inexperienced teams might say to themselves, uh-oh, you know, here's where we lose it. But since that point, Coach, SIU's gone on a 20-4 run and looking for more. And led by that man right there, Eric McGill. And McGill with an opportunity to add to his total. Noah Thomas now picks up his third foul. And well, you can see the fouls right there. That we didn't, our crew didn't forget to put anything there for Southern Illinois. That's, they have not fouled anyone yet. Drake was six. Now that's moving your feet, resisting the temptation to reach. It's a chess match out there. You, Drake comes out of halftime. Obviously, Darren DeVries made some adjustments. They jump out, they score seven straight, and then Brian Mullins calls the timeout, regroups his troops, and has not looked back since. And I had my count wrong there. I thought it was one in bonus already. It will be from here on out with the sixth foul and a three from the corner for Barry Benson. It is all Salukis right now. I am not sure if we can get a look at Darren DeVries' face, but when Benson made that three, that was just the, the look of doom in Coach DeVries' face, and I'm sure he's thinking to himself, holy cow, Barrett Benson making a three? Benson picks up his second foul. As Robbins will go to the line. You know, that, even that's interesting, obviously, because Robbins obviously in some foul trouble with three. He's got to be much more aggressive on a play like that. Now, he did it right. He didn't get the offensive foul, turns it into a three-point play. But still, that's a fine line to walk, obviously, when you have that many fouls already in the bank. They're going to have to try and speed SIU up, but more importantly, they're going to have to try and turn him over. And the Saluki's been very good this afternoon, taking care of the basketball. Only five turnovers. And they fall right back into their pace. Three, no. Robbins with the board. I think the roof would have came off this place if that would have went in. Thomas will try it. No. The rebound tracked down by Robbins, the offensive board. Now from the corner, no. Buckstrich was going to pull the trigger and another Drake turnover. And again, you can talk about the turnovers, but as you said earlier, credit the defense. And a block from behind by Robbins. And Drake back the other way. And a save in great effort. It's still loose out there. And how about that effort? How about that Saluki effort? And... The foul will send Benson to the line. And this crowd appreciates the hustle on the defensive end by Southern Illinois. Benson goes strong and forces the foul to be called. Benson with 16 points. He and McGill with 16 each. Murphy, by the way, with his third foul. So those are starting to add up. Not only for the Bulldogs as a team, but individually. Coach DeVries trying to shake things up and look for a combination that's going to somehow get Drake back into this game. They haven't been able to make a three. Only three made threes. They've had some good open looks, but haven't gone down. 21, the largest lead for the Saluki, so they keep building here. You can see Damask paid attention to the scouting report. He knows Sturtz is not a three-point shooter, sags off, kind of a one-man zone. Filipovic, short, rebound, grabbed by Barrett Benson. And a travel 
called. Matt gets some groans, but looked okay from here. And that was a tough catch for Benson in the middle of traffic. It happens though, right? Sometimes even when your team has everything going their way, you want you get a little greedy as a fan. You want it all, don't you? You want every call. On the 10, Roman Penn. Now another three. Still won't go. And the Saluki's just ice cold. One for nine from beyond the arc in the second half. And now the clock starts to become an enemy, particularly with the pace you talked about it earlier that Southern Illinois wants to play. They're good to wind out a 20, good 20 seconds every time. From the corner, the three is good. Carrington Davis and a new largest lead for Southern Illinois. Everybody getting into the act, making threes. It's contagious. Drake tries to answer. And Davis there to get the rebound. 24 point lead for the Saluki. He's under eight to go. Brian Mullins trying to get his team just understand time score and situation. Nothing in transition. Back it out. Run your offensive set. Run clock. McGill. A fade and lane violation. Or no, pardon me. It was a was a foul. As Penn picks up his second foul. The Salukis continue to build on this lead as we head to our under eight timeout. Established in 1907, the Missouri Valley Conference is the second oldest Division I athletics conference. To learn more about our storied history, visit the Valley Runs Deep landing page at mvc-sports.com backslash the Valley Runs Deep. RC, how contagious is shooting? Well, Davis has hit his fourth three for Southern Illinois. Barrett Benson, his seventh three. And then watch this, the half-court three-point shot. That young man is going to win. I'm not sure what he wins. Maybe a scholarship for second semester? I'm, I, I, I'm guessing not. I'm guessing not. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of admiration, a lot of pats on the back. But you know what? Oh, he's got to win at least a couple of, <laughs> of pizzas. But it's one of those days that if you are uh, at least barring a heck of a turnaround here, you're wearing maroon. You're in a pretty good mood right now. Eric McGill at the free throw line as we come back with an opportunity to add to his total. He now has 17. Barrett Benson with a double-double, 18 points, 10 boards. It's his first double-double as a Saluki, as well as a career high in points scored. And now McGill matches it. This has been impressive for Southern Illinois. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll remain Drake Ball. And again, you know, Drake comes into this one. They're feeling pretty good about things. They've had all the success at home. Co-championship last year. I mean, they, they have their sights set on some big things come March in St. Louis and beyond. This is a perfect example of just how tough it is to win on the road. I mean, Drake had won three of their last four. SIU had lost their last two, albeit both on the road. And all of a sudden you come home, the rims are nicer, the fans are, are applauding you, and all of a sudden you're up 24 and you're scratching your head if you're Darren DeVries saying, wait a second, this isn't supposed to happen. Do you think and again, you're experienced, you have your own, you've seen it from a lot of different perspectives, but do you think maybe the average fan doesn't quite appreciate how difficult it is to win on the road? 
play. Absolutely. And, you know, you look at this great ball club. I mean, they aren't a senior-dominated team. They're, they're a bunch of young guys. D.J. Wilkins, only a sophomore. Anthony Murphy is, is a senior, but Sturts is, is a freshman. Filipovich, sophomore. Penn is sophomore. So they've got young guys. And, you know, even though they've had success on the road and had some good non-conference wins, life is tough on the road here in the Valley. Don't go, and Robbins finally able to get enough juice behind the ball to lead to a rebound for his teammates, and he'll score on the other end. Oh, but right now, just a long, long way to go for Drake. Southern Illinois, not a team that you think of probably when it comes to fast breaks. But the fast break point breakdown, 16 nothing right now in favor of the Salukis. And They have been able to get out in transition. And McGill especially knocking down some threes. Rims in and out, and the rebound picked up by Sam Jones. Redshirt junior from Minneapolis. They'll feed Robbins, and he can't get it to go, and a foul going the other way. Filipovich whistled for the foul. Big junior from Germany. See Carrington Davis coming back into the game as Barrett Benson gets a breather. And you look at the lineup now for Southern Illinois. Four freshmen and a senior. That senior, by the way, McGill, 18 points, 10 rebounds, so just shy of a double-double. 20 is his career high. And a foul. We'll send the Salukis to the line. Kolopovich picks up his third foul. Brian Mullins told us at shoot around earlier today that, you know, his team has really worked hard and, and they have bought into the process. And they, they know that they may not get rewarded right now, but down the road they will. Well, guess what? They're getting rewarded here this afternoon. And the process is working. Lance Jones doing an outstanding job of running the show, getting to the rim, keeping Drake honest on the defensive end. And again, if you're watching this one and, and not necessarily all that familiar with the Salukis, Jones had not played point guard before this season at any level. Jackson for three, can't get it to go, and the rebound, Lance Jones. Jackson just struggling. It's 0 for 3 now. So he falls right in with his teammates and not getting able, not being able to get those shots to fall. Ertz picks up the foul. Let's have a look. The mask so good at protecting the ball, getting to the rim. The mask with nine points. Sorry, coach. Yeah, he's one of those guys, RC, that at the end of the night, you look at the stat sheet, and he's in double figures, and you're wondering, geez, he didn't take enough shots to get to 10 points. But very efficient. But you love those guys, don't you? You love the guys who score the, you know, quote unquote, quiet. 10 or quiet 12. <laughs> those those are the guys that as a coach you okay how many are we going to get from this guy how many are we going to get from this guy well I don't know but the mask we know we're going to get 10 to 15 every single night. Filipovich no and the rebound by Jones. I'm sticking to my comparison with Jones and uh, Legba from you and I. Jones with nine boards to go with his 12 points. And that's one of the things that Allegra did a great job of for you and I. Good rebounding guard, hard-nosed kid. Fans wanted that one. Right side, three goes. Jonah Jackson. Again, the Bulldogs have not been able to find much, but credit due to Southern Illinois. The Bulldogs starting to take a little bit off of that lead, but again, there's not a whole lot of time left. At least not when you're looking at 
that kind of deficit. And not when Southern Illinois will grind a good 25 seconds every possession. Jones can't get it to go, but again, 24 seconds used that time. Thomas will float it. No, quick one and out as Davis gets the board. And who did he take away the rebound from? But Lance Jones. McGill, we're going to have a tough time, aren't we, picking a Saluki? Player of the game in this one. It's been a balanced effort. Three is good. Harrington Davis to second. The Nebraska transfer with his fifth three pointer of the year. Long three won't go. I know who you, you like for player of the game. I know you're going to look at some numbers and stats. I don't know that I would agree with you, though. I haven't even said anything. I think you're gonna. I, I think you're gonna go with Benson. I'm gonna defer at this point. I will <laughs> say that it is really been, as I think it has to be when you're you're down to eight, nine healthy players. It has been a balanced effort for Southern Illinois. Yeah, no, it certainly has. It certainly has. And a shot clock violation, and at this stage of the game, you're fine with that, right? Oh, absolutely. It's not a bad turnover because they can't run and score on the other end. Under two to go. Saluki's with this one in control. Some happy Saluki fans. I like the little one. The little one's even happy. And There's a lot to be happy about here in Carbondale this afternoon. <laughs> and why not be happy at this point? Saluki's with a 66-42 lead as we take a look at the schedule coming up for Southern Illinois. And Southern Illinois stays here in the friendly confines of the Banterra Center and league-leading Northern Iowa, who dispensed of Bradley yesterday on the road. Northern Iowa putting together a heck of a season to this point. In a lot of ways, it's it's a simple formula, formula to win the Missouri Valley Conference, and pretty much any conference. You've got to win all your games at home and split the ones on the road. And right now, Southern Illinois is definitely winning all their games at home. Four players in double figures, led by Benson and McGill with 18 each. Damask with 10, 12 for Jones. And eight points for Davis. Those are the only five Salukis that have scored. That again, only eight have played. Only eight have played because they don't have very many that are healthy at this point. And you're down to about eight or nine scholarship players. Drake will go to the free throw line here. The masks points all coming in the second half. McGill. 18 points, as we mentioned. 10 points in the second half. You get a good look at Lance Jones coming off the floor. And again, he has a lot to smile about. 12 points, 9 rebounds, 3 assists. And just really start to finish pretty dominating effort here by Southern Illinois. Three from the left side is no good by Will Keller. The walk on from Marion, Illinois, trying to get his name in the scoring column. We're under a minute to go. And a whistle and a foul. We've not said that on that side of the floor very often. Let's take a look at our players of the game, a presentation of State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 1-800-STATE-FARM or by visiting statefarm.com. I know you wanted Benson. He did have a double-double, but Eric McGill got the Salukis off to a great start at the beginning of the game, and then when Drake made their run at the beginning of the second half, it was McGill who knocked down 
a couple of threes and kept the Bulldogs at bay. And then Liam Robbins, 21 points, a quiet 21 points as he was in foul trouble most of the afternoon. But it's a good effort for the young man here, sophomore for Drake. I'd like the, le the record to show, please, though, that I did abstain from voting. <laughs> As you winding the clock down here in the steal. And the lay-in is good for Noah Thomas. And at this point, Southern Illinois can just run out the clock. And the Salukis get back to 500 in the Missouri Valley. And the fans on their feet in Carbondale. Sometimes you just have one of those afternoons on the offensive end, and that's what Drake had. 4 of 25 from the three-point line, but credit Brian Mullins and his gritty Salukis. Defensively, they kept them out of the paint. They didn't allow dribble penetration. Quite frankly, shut them down. So Drake will try to regroup from here. Southern Illinois with some momentum and well-earned momentum at that. Be sure to join us coming up Wednesday for more men's basketball action on the Valley on ESPN as Bradley hosts Illinois State at Carver Arena in Peoria in the first of a pair of matchups yet to come this season in the I-74 rivalry. Exclusive coverage begins at 7 o'clock Central on the Valley on ESPN. Hope you enjoyed this one. For Coach Rich Zavosik, I'm R.C. McBride saying so long from Carbondale, Illinois where the Southern Illinois Salukis have defeated the Drake Bulldogs 66-49. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Thanks for watching tonight's contest. This has been a presentation of ESPN.